everyone. Welcome to the Samsung Foldable session. I'm Tae Kim, and I'm a business development manager working on partner outreach for large screen devices. I'm very excited to share our story about foldables and how to better structure app on foldable devices. To begin, let's talk about why we should focus on foldables. For the past decade in the mobile industry, one of the biggest challenges was finding a way to maximize the screen size while keeping the device small. People desire larger displays, but don't want their device to get bigger. Therefore, when the devices became bezel-less with an infinite display, there was limited room for further innovation on the display itself. However, evolution in display technology opened up new possibilities by overcoming the limitations of traditional displays. New form factors with foldable, stretchable, and rollable displays brought various screen sizes to the market and changed the way people use their devices. And we are at the cusp of a new era in the smartphone industry. With massive efforts and investment from various manufacturers, the foldable market is growing rapidly and is expected to hit 31 million units by 2023. At Samsung, since we announced the first Galaxy Fold, we have shown continuous innovation in this category by introducing both book type and clamshell type devices to the market. In the process of launching three generations of foldable devices, we also learned valuable lessons. The most important lesson was that the best user experience comes from a deep integration of apps with the capabilities of the device. By teaming up with developers, we look forward to bringing innovation together. To do so, we would like to introduce three main categories of features that can provide richer experience to your apps. The first thing to consider is to take advantage of the large screen. According to surveys, a large screen is the number one factor in customer purchase and repurchase decision. It is also a huge factor in customer satisfaction. And this score is even higher after rear usage. In addition, Fold customers tend to spend more time using apps in categories such as multimedia, internet, and mail compared to S20 Plus users. To make the most of the large screen, you could show more information depending on the screen size. Using a responsive layout is a good example. You can put contents to be arranged and displayed in a two-pane format as the screen gets bigger, or show contents from different levels of UI simultaneously so that user can quickly access to the content without a full screen transition. We can also make your apps easier to navigate by repositioning content according to various screen size. You can use a combination of multiple principles to enhance the user experience. Multitasking is the second category to consider, which brings a whole new level of productivity. With the Z Fold series, Multi-window usage is seven times greater than on traditional format smartphones. Users also reported higher satisfaction. Thus, it is important to check whether your app works well in multi-window. In multi-window mode, we can get better usability by adopting drag and drop and multi-instance. Drag and drop allows the user to share text or images easily from one window to another. If the app supports multi-instance, users can open the same app twice and check content side by side. For instance, it's easier to work off two documents at the same time using drag and drop. Also, multi-instance is now available on Chrome browser as well as Samsung internet. Lastly, flex mode, which is also known as tabletop mode, shows an optimized UI when half-folded and provides a convenient hands-free experience. Only available in foldable devices, flex mode provides a richer experience during video calls, watching video, and so on. Up until now, we have talked about which areas to consider when optimizing your apps on foldable devices. Now, over to now to talk about how to implement these features. Thanks, Tay. I'm Naung, and I'm a software engineer working on the Samsung Android framework. From now on, let's build your app together. To optimize your apps for foldables, first, I want to let you know several design key points. 
responsive layout, sliding pane layout, and navigation layout. First, responsive layout. The Galaxy G Fold 3 has two screens on one device. Since users fold and unfold their device frequently, it's very important to provide an optimized layout for each screen. To do so, support portrait and landscape. Use the whole screen in both orientations and add large screen layouts for resolutions, especially when the screen size is greater than 600 dpi. The sliding pane layout component supports showing two panes side by side on foldables and larger devices. Meanwhile, on smaller devices such as phones, it automatically adapts to show only one pane. In addition, on foldable devices, sliding pane layout automatically adjusts the size of the two panes so that they are positioned on either side of an overlapping fold. So please consider this component for your apps. Here is an example of using a sliding pane layout that has a recycler view as its left pane and a fragment container view as its primary detail view to display contents from the left pane. Next, let's talk about navigation layout. When the device is folded, most people hold their device vertically, gripping the bottom of the device. But when unfolded, most people hold their device by its size like a book. So, reachability is one of the most important elements on foldable devices. The navigation layer components allow your app to move navigation where people can access it. So, this will provide better ergonomics for navigation as your UI's case. Also, because both navigation and navigation layer supports almost the same set of APIs, adding navigation layer to your app will be super easy. A typical layout for navigation layer will look similar to this. The next one is app continuity and multitasking. I will explain in more detail one by one. App continuity makes intuitive seamless transitions between the cover and main screens on foldable devices. To support this, retain or restore states as the device goes through the configuration changes and handle combinations and chains of configuration changes. Multi-window support is essential for multitasking on foldable devices. Your app may already work in multi-window by default, but there are several things to consider. Supporting multi-window means your app will be shown in various window sizes. Please check if there are any layout issues with these situations. Also, try to consider multi-region cases update and handle your app properly, even if your app is not on the foreground. Multi-instance can be useful for some use cases, such as printing two web browsers side by side. By adding activity launch adjacent flag, when starting a new activity, Galaxy devices will open it right next to the existing activity. Soon, new launch mode and metadata will be introduced for applications to have launch behaviors similar to single task, but still allowed it to be created in multiple instances. How to implement drag and drop? First, for implementing drag, when the user starts a drag with a gesture, usually by a long press, the app detects this gesture and then creates a crypt data for drag. After that, the app starts a drag using this dragged data. Next, drop. When the user releases a drag on a view in your app, the system dispatches a drop event in that view. In that view listener, you can get and handle a crypt data which drags data into your app. Galaxy foldable devices provide several state transitions such as flex mode, which is also known as tabletop mode. If you make your app's response to these state transitions, it will help your apps to build more optimized and differentiated experience on foldable devices. To implement flex mode, you have to use Window Manager Jetpack library. It provides a common API surface for support different and new device types, such as foldable devices, provide information about display and callbacks to be notified 
when your app has an impact by a state transition. For more information and examples plus useful development links, check out the URL on the screen. Now, over to dong to talk about Plex mode on web. Thank you, Naung. I'm dong Product Manager of Samsung Internet Browser. Let's talk about Flex mode experience on web. As you saw, foldable devices has very unique and special user experience called Flex mode. Until now, only Android apps can be optimized for Flex mode. Samsung Internet also provides Flex mode optimization for full screen video watching experience. If user fold the device as Flex mode while watching video as full screen on Samsung Internet, then the video view area is moved to the upper screen and controllers are located on the bottom screen. But still, we think that there should be a way for web developers can optimize their website for flex mode. To support web developers, we are putting our effort on making a web standard API called Device Posture API. By using this new standard API, web developers can provide the best user experience considering the device's posture. In terms of standard, to make things easy to understand and utilize, three kinds of posture type have been defined, continuous, folded, and folded over. Folded is the status we are focusing on for this session. When the device is folded, it means the device is in flex mode. Let's see a short example of webcam, which can be used as base of video call. You can see the web page has transformed when the device is folded. We will provide code level explanation at the tech session titled Unfolding the Future of Responsive Web Design. Please join the session if you have further interest. Let me guess your next question. When can developers actually utilize this API in real world? You can test it now with Samsung Internet. We are supporting this API from version 16.0 behind flag for now. And we are expecting to provide it as a default enabled feature with version 16.2. And I'm really excited to announce that YouTube is working together with us to provide the best flex mode experience on the web, which users are already enjoying with YouTube's app on their Z Fold or Z Flip. It's time for you to look into the new API and start to think how you can utilize it for a better experience for your users. That's all, and back to Tay. Thanks, dong -woo. By providing an enhanced foldable experience, we can enrich the foldable ecosystem and thus create a virtuous cycle with more devices on board. Also, many of these experiences can also be expanded to more than 250 million Android tablets already being used in the market. We look forward to opening up a whole new world of exciting experiences together with you on Foldables. Thank you for watching.